I started studying engineering with the thought that, you know, how cool must it be to actually develop a piece of technology? I would see something like, you know, a, a headphone or a loudspeaker or a computer or, you know, anything. And just re realizing, you know, there are people who design, develop these things it just seemed so incredible to me that anyone could be capable of doing that, that I could be capable of doing that, that I could be a part of that. I don't think I could believe that that's something that I could do. Welcome to the very first episode of the Fresh Engineer podcast, where fresh engineers share their stories. I'm your host and mechanic engineer, Anna Reich. And in today's episode, I'm talking to Jeffrey Thomson who is an audio and acoustics engineer working on audio equipment like headphones, speakers and hearing aids at the company GN Group in Copenhagen, Denmark. We met during the first week of our bachelor studies at the Technical University of Berlin and we've been really close friends ever since. So when he decided to come visit me in Stockholm for the weekend, I took the chance to persuade him to be the first guest on my podcast. In our conversation we talk about how his passion for music and technology led him to pursue a career in audio engineering. The difference between audio engineering, acoustics engineering and sound engineering, his experience of studying and later working abroad in Denmark, and why he decided not to do a PhD despite his passion for research. So I hope you enjoy our conversation as much as I did. Let's start all the way at the beginning. Okay. Where are you from? Where did you grow up? And what were you like as a kid? What were your interests? Okay, so I was born in Hamburg. Germany, northern Germany, um, and grew up in a suburb, in like multiple suburbs of Hamburg. Um, I used to be very interested in outer space as a kid. I had like Lego space station sets and books about like solar system, uh, including Pluto as the ninth planet. No one's ever going to take that away from me. Um, if you want to argue with me, about this later on. I won't. <laughs> um, I got into music at a pretty early age, so I have pretty clear memory of, yeah, listening to music in the kitchen with my mom. And I think my, my interests as a kid were somewhere between, yeah, solar system, that's what I'm going to call it, solar system, um, rock, being a rock star, and being a secret agent. Those were all things that I thought were pretty cool. I love it. <laughs> so let's move on to your high school days. What were your favorite subjects in high school? And how did that impact your career aspirations? Yeah. So so like as I mentioned, um, music was like a pretty important thing to me pretty early on. Um, I would say almost as important as space in the beginning, but music kind of took over as as the years went on. I did um, manage to or, or decide to go to a very music-focused high school. So from age um, 10, that's that's kind of when you go to high school in, in Germany. Um, so for nine years, I was on a yeah very music-focused high school. Got to, yeah, join lots of different musical ensembles. And for a very long time, I at least kind of played with the idea of studying music, although I was always quite aware of the fact that that would take a lot of uh, practice because, you know, unlike, um, yeah, other types of study programs to study music, you basically have to be a master at your subject before you even get started. Um, so you already have to be like extremely good at like playing the instrument that you want to study, for instance, and also really good at playing piano, if that's not the instrument you want to study. And it's just like, yeah, um, the chances of getting into like music college are not super high, I would say. What was the question? Oh, what 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 were my favorite subjects? So yeah, so that the answer to that was uh, well, music. Um, not, I mean, especially... As I got closer to graduating, music class was probably my, fa my favorite class. And uh, I kind of majored in music, if you want to call it that, um, um, throughout the like, yeah, last three years of high school. Apart from that, uh, I guess math. Um, uh, I talk to my brother sometimes about how we have this shared experience of kind of saving our math homework 
um, to like the end as kind of like a reward. Um, so all the other kind of more like text-based homework um, be kind of, you know, um, less attractive. And then we would kind of keep math homework as, you know, kind of dessert <laughs> of the, the, the homework meal, if you want to call it that. I mean, I, I liked a lot of things about high school. I liked, liked learning, you know, different languages. I liked sciences. And so then when it was getting closer to graduation, what were the career options you were considering? Did you think about the subjects you liked or how did you make this decision? And also, did you have any people that influenced you, maybe in the field of engineering, someone in your family or acquaintances? Yeah, so for sure, um, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what I wanted to study. Um, it was not, interestingly, I want to say, it was never out of the question for me that I would study. So, you know, I mean, getting a university degree is not the only thing that you can do to, you know, um, you know, pursue a career. But for me, that was always super clear because somehow no one kind of showed me any other alternatives. Um, as I mentioned before, I was still, you know, considering going into music and art. I mean, I, I mean, music is an art form. Um, but uh, I was, again, super interested in all different types of subjects. So we had like um, open university days in Hamburg where we'd go to the university and could kind of like listen to lectures of like all different um, subjects. And, you know, as far as I was concerned, I could study almost anything. Like I was interested in philosophy, um, you know, uh, biology sounded pretty cool. Um, and also then, you know, the more technology um, or like engineering related um, careers, study careers, even though I found it really hard to imagine what an engineer actually did or what the, the study program would be like. There was something about the idea of developing technology and it sounded cool to me. And yeah, I, I did try to talk to people who worked as engineers. Um, I think that was an important point for me because I wanted to know what I would be doing after I got the degree. I never worried too much about like the actual study program because I, I guess I already knew that you know that's a finite period of time that you spend and the much longer period of time is that the one that you're going to spend you know in a job, in a career. And I did go out and, you know, try to find engineers that I could ask questions like, you know, what is your regular work day like? You know, what do you, what kind of stuff do you work on? Um, I'm not really sure that helped me that much, but I mean, it must have, because at least in the end, I did decide to, to study an engineering career. So what advice would you give a high school student who's considering to go into engineering but who maybe isn't so sure it's for them. Yeah, try try to find try to find engineers that are yeah willing to answer some questions that are willing to kind of paint you a, a vivid picture what a you know a day in the work life of an engineer looks like. If you're interested in different types of engineering, you know try to find you know different types of engineers. Try I would say try to talk to as many people as possible. Because, you know, there's such a wealth of different job options that, you know, just talking to one person might not be, you know, representative or, you know, might not be the right job for you. But just to get kind of a feel um, for that. Uh, in my case, it was a conversation that I had with an acoustic engineer, retired acoustic engineer, who through kind of complete coincidence, I got in touch with. And I had a phone call with this man. <laughs> um, I never actually met him, but I had a phone call with him. And uh, yeah, he told me about his work, um, how he had um, worked, I think, mostly in room acoustics, kind of planning, you know, different types of buildings, like, you know, ice skating rinks and, um, you know, theaters, um, classrooms and 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 so on and so forth from an acoustic point of view and um, I think that was a yeah like a, a key a 
a moment for me during my search that I realized, okay, there's, you know, there are people who work with kind of sound waves in like a technical setting and and that just made total sense to me and that's when i knew that that's that's what i wanted to study quite specifically and so now you're you graduated from high school and you decided to study so can you talk a little bit about what you studied and what that was like for you so so in general um what i did then right was that i and this 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 same man, this retired acoustic engineer, um, then told me, oh, you want to study acoustics? Um, you got to go to uh, Technical University of Berlin. I was li living in Hamburg. Uh, he was living in Hamburg. Uh, he said, that's the place you need to go. I'm like, okay, then I guess that's the place I do need to go. And, you know, I did my research and, you know, pretty much I found out that was the only place in Germany where I could specialize in acoustics already during my bachelor's so that made my i think my choice of university very easy because there was like only one choice um i was lucky enough to to get into that program which is called uh yeah um, physical engineering or engineering physics depending on how you want to translate that i i think i i loved going to university from 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 day one it was just you know maybe just because i love learning new stuff and you, know, you learn lots of new stuff and uh, it was all technical which you know in a way was really cool not that i'm not also interested in other types of subjects but um, yeah it was you know maybe a little bit like going extremely hardcore on your kind of math and physics classes uh, in high school and you know meeting people who are also interested in exactly that and you know doing that together i think that was a really key experience for me that i had people on campus or you know in my study programs like you know you <laughs> because we shared a lot of kind of the same courses during the first um, two three semesters <laughs> and that was really great <laughs> and was there anything that was different from what you had expected or imagined yeah, interesting question because I don't even know what I expected. I'm not sure I had much of an expectation at all of what university would be like, apart from the fact that I, I guess I hoped that I would like it. <laughs> um, yeah, so in that sense, no, I, I, I can't really, I can't really answer that question. I would say I, I was, I was not negatively surprised. Uh, overall, I, uh, I like one key, yeah, almost like mantra that has kind of followed me through my entire university career is that I never one day kind of regretted my study choice, um, even though there was a lot of room for that for me personally, because there were a lot of different paths that I was considering, and I obviously had to choose one. So it was very reassuring for me that at, at any point in time when I kind of checked in with myself, that I felt like I was doing the right thing for myself. Um, yeah. Hmm. What was the most difficult part of the studies for you? The bachelor studies, if anything. Hmm. Well, I mean, there were certain classes that were extremely hard, for sure. Uh, in my case, um, for sure, that was probably machine design. Um, machine design, maybe electrical engineering was pretty tough. I had like one class in electrical engineering, like two electrical engineering basics. Um, I figured out that I don't find electricity very intuitive. I'm going to say this on camera is really bad for an audio engineer, so please don't tell anyone. <laughs> um, okay. Um, Read between us and everyone watching. Yeah, yeah, yes. So please, please, please don't tell my, my employers. Um, no one can ever find this. This is a secret. I always loved mechanics, found mechanics super intuitive. Like if I, you know, if I push this thing, you know, what's going to happen to it? You know, it's going to move or it's going to fall over. And that those are things that you can then calculate. I thought that was pretty cool in mechanics, but electricity is like, ah, to this day, um, I wish it was more intuitive to me, but, but it just isn't. Hmm. Um, so probably those two classes. So after your bachelor, you decided to go for a master's degree. Why did you decide to pursue a master's degree? And how did you decide which master's program to choose? Yeah. 
Yes. Uh huh. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's also a nice question. So yeah. So to recap, my my bachelor's degree was called physics engineering or physical engineering, which was I would say a bit like mechanical engineering, but less machine design and more theory, more physics, more math, more um, yeah, um, yeah, more physics and more math, basically. <laughs> And I then used that program to specialize in what uh, we call technical acoustics. So, um, you know, how do sound waves work? You know, how do they propagate through air? Um, and how can we describe that kind of mathematically? And yeah, that was great. Um, I, I loved that. And I could have continued to do that in a master's degree. Uh, physical engineering and um, do even more of that. I suppose I could have stopped um, studying and and gotten like some kind of job, but is also something that never ever occurred to me that I would that I could stop studying after a bachelor's degree. I feel like in Germany, like in the German university system, at least amongst yeah engineers and you know in the sciences a fairly usual path to choose to to do a master's degree and to have like as a bachelor's degree is like three years in Germany and then a master's degree is another two um and I had absolutely no um desire to get out of university I loved being in university I loved that um life I loved the freedom I love you know working on all those different subjects and yeah um you know, uh, uh, a sizable part of me, you know, wishes I was still in university today. Like I'm not, and that's also totally fine. Um, but I, that is definitely something that I could imagine. So as to choosing my master program uh, or a master's degree, the funny thing about that is I, I actually knew about the program that I chose before I even started my bachelor's. So as I, as I told you before, I had conversation with this retired acoustics engineer. And then based on his input, I did my research and like looked for, you know, acoustics related programs at TU Berlin. And one of the things that popped up really soon was a master's degree called audio communication technology. And, you know, like uh, every program that had like a little website, um, kind of describing what the program is about. And they had like, um, you know, a, a bullet list of uh, topics um, that they kind of do research on. And, you know, I just read that list and it all sounded, you know, extremely cool and, you know, very exciting to me. And just the thought that I could work on any of those was very fascinating to me. I'm trying to remember a few, few of, um, a few of those topics. Um, um, I suppose things such as, um, you know what nowadays we tend to call spatial audio like um simulating um virtual acoustic um scenes with like a computer simulation very much like how we simulate visual environments with you know vr glasses basically doing that same thing but you know for audio and these types of things so i i, I want to say my entire study path was pretty predetermined before I even walked in the door on on day one into Technical University of Berlin. That being said, I did, um, because I do like to make sure that I make good decisions, um, spend quite a bit of time kind of revising that decision uh, as I got to the end of my bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I was looking at a few different programs because now, of course, I had seen, you know, I had three years of experience um, and I'd taken a bunch of inter interesting classes. One of the things that I considered, for instance, was a master's called, um, I think, scientific computing, which, um, yeah, is is some somehow an interface between, um, you know, coding, programming, and um, using that to do, yeah, research. <clears throat> and... Um, I had discovered throughout two or three classes in my bachelor's that I really enjoyed coding. Um, and I really enjoyed um, also simulations, 
which you usually um, you know need some piece of software for, or you need to like code them yourself in 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 some environment um, like MATLAB or in a language like you know Python or C. Mm-hmm. And um, so I did also think about doing that. Um, I think I even took one or two classes from that um, degree just out of interest. Um, but yeah, then ultimately it was the audio thing that I wanted to do and that I wanted to learn most about and the kind of the study program that was the most interesting to me. And yeah, then I did that. And were you happy with that when, when you started? Yes. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, you know, I stand by, you know, what I said earlier and, you know, um, yeah, not, not one day did I, during my studies, did I think, oh, this was the wrong, you know, I chose the wrong program. Um, so the great thing for me about this audio communication technology program is that it is um, uh, immensely interdisciplinary. So they kind of force us to do not only technical courses, but also some kind of empirical methods to like conduct um, surveys and, and listening tests, um, you did music psychology, um, I did one or two classes in musicology, kind of, you know, music science. Um, we had offers from, you know, sound artists giving seminars and, you know, actual, you know, music, music is an art form <laughs> classes, um, where you would, you know, use some technique to, to create experimental music. Um, alongside a bunch of, uh, you know, technical classes like, you know, audio technology, you know, how does a loudspeaker work? How does a microphone work? How does, uh, you know, what happens if you put a loudspeaker into a room? You know, how does the room respond to that? You also went abroad to Denmark during your master's. I did. Yes. (laughs) Did you do that? And how was that experience for you? Um, Yeah, Uh, I wish I knew why like uh it was not um it was definitely not my initial plan I want to say I decide I had decided before I started my master's that I wanted to go abroad during my master's um basically do um do an exchange semester a lot of my friends had done that during their bachelors I had not but that was also due to the reason that I had been abroad like uh, before in the past, like during high school and and after high school as well. And I moved newly to Berlin. So I didn't, uh, I didn't have the innate drive to, you know, see another new place during, yeah, during that episode. But then when I got to my master's, I thought, yeah, it's time. And I want to, I want to go abroad again because uh, it's always um, given me a lot of great stuff. And I've always grown, you know, immensely during the times that um, I traveled abroad. Um, So in a way, it was kind of a no-brainer. I did intend to go somewhere very far away. Um, I was looking at a study program similar to mine in Taiwan. And um, yeah, I was basically looking at, yeah, study options like fairly far away from, from Berlin. But none of those really seemed to materialize for for different reasons like i think that program that i wanted to join in taiwan they had like turned out they closed that down and then you know that was no longer an option um and then i i sort of had this notion that I'd like to see what scandinavia is like because i'd heard a lot of yeah i want to say like good things about it uh, things that interested me like um yeah like i i know i had read a report once that um uh, I think Denmark is like one of the most um, efficient countries uh, in the world. So the piece of information was that Danish people create the most, like the highest per capita GDP, like per working hour in, I don't know, Europe, I guess. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So somehow they manage to yeah generate more wealth per hour people in other countries, while also having one of the lowest average uh, weekly working hours in, in Europe. And 
yeah, I think that combination kind of really appealed to me um, just as a concept, like, you know, working less, but, you know, achieving, you know, being more effective during those working hours. I thought, yeah, that's an idea I definitely, you know, um, subscribe to. And yeah, just as one example of, you know, like cool things that I had heard about, you know, living and working in Scandinavia that I'd be interested to try out. It was in the end a bit more of a coincidence, I would say, because uh, I was looking for an internship. So we had to do uh, some kind of internship for my master's degree. And yeah, I didn't have like a super clear vision of what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to work with audio. And I mean, that's obviously also, you know, expected in, in my degree that, you know, an internship is somehow audio related. But apart from that, I could I could pretty much choose whatever I wanted. And then I found an internship. I found an opening online um, by a company called Bang & Olufsen, which, um, you know, I had heard of, like the company that I knew because, you know, I, they make loudspeakers, like really nice looking loudspeakers. And, uh, you know, they have quite a good, uh, yeah, I would, I would say quite a strong brand. So when I saw that, I kind of, yeah, that really spoke to me, this uh, idea that, you know, I could actually go into that company and become part of their, you know, uh, R&D unit, you know, for a while. And so I applied for that internship and yeah, luckily I got it. And I was just like so happy because it was like at that point in time, I think it was like the coolest thing of my life. <laughs> um, also because in a way that was one of the kind of end goals of my engineering studies, if you will, I, I started studying engineering with the thought that, you know, how cool must it be to actually develop a piece of technology? You know, I would see something like, you know, a, a headphone or a loudspeaker or, you know, I mean, any type of any piece of technology, really, you know, a, a computer or, you know, anything and just re realizing, you know, there are people who design, develop these things just seemed so incredible to me that anyone could be capable of doing that, that I could be capable of doing that, that I could be a part of that. Um, that was, yeah, like, like I couldn't, like, I, I don't think I could believe that that's something that I could do. Even when I started studying engineering, I was like, yeah, like, I mean, I guess this is what people study that want to do that. But it was like, it wasn't reality to me until I saw this internship at, you know, a company that develops audio technology that I, a company that I think is, you know, cool, um, that um, would be exciting to work for. And they have an internship opening and their requirements fit extremely well to my study background. So that was like the first time that I realized, okay, like I can actually I guess I could actually do this type of work. And I applied for the for the internship and I got it. And then what I tried to do is um, add on to that an exchange semester in the same country. So Bang & Olufsen is a Danish company. They um, sit and they have their headquarters in, in rural Western Denmark. And um, I thought, well, it would be like very fitting if I could also do an exchange semester at Denmark Technical University. So then I applied for that as well. Bit risky. I did not, um, you know, kind of when you apply for an exchange program at TU Berlin, you kind of put down, um, like you put down up to three options um, of where you might, might like to go. Um, and I decided to not do that. And I only put down Denmark Technical University um, because I I realized I didn't actually want to go anywhere else. And that worked out okay. I guess a bit risky. <laughs> and then, then I had this, you know, really nice year abroad lined up, kind of ten months, five months in the internship, five months at uh, at the university. Uh, and Denmark is just in general a very good country for um, for the audio and acoustics industry. The, um, those industries are very strong in Denmark. So, which also meant that like the study programs at the technical university were pretty strong and. You know, um, there were some really interesting classes that I could take there. Okay. And so to kind of uh, round off your university experience, um, 
that we talk about today. Mm-hmm. Um, what advice would he give a fresh engineering student who, you know, is on the first day of their mm-hmm. university experience? How can they make it through their engineering studies? Yeah. So I I think one key I don't know skill if you want to call that that I identified not only during university actually also already back in high school figure out how the system works meaning figure out exactly what you need in order to you know pass an exam for instance or you know or whatever whatever is needed to pass the course you know whether it's you know um written assignments or or group work or to 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 not get lost um i think you know and i always try to figure out you know how am i going to be uh, measured how how is my performance going to be assessed and 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 try to understand that as good as possible because yeah otherwise i would say you know you run the risk of you know, learning things in a course, which is, you know, great and, uh, you know, enjoying a course, which is also great and, you know, very important. But in the end, you know, you, you want to at least pass that class so you could, you know, continue finishing your degree. And uh, I, I don't think it's always super intuitive, you know, how your, you know, success in a class is measured. So I, I guess like, you know, the earlier, you can figure that out in the semester the uh, the better because then then that gives you it gives you the agency to kind of decide you know um you know i can work on this because you know i'm interested in learning that and that's great and you know i do that but i'm also like very aware of you know in order to pass this class you know this is what i'm going to um have to be good at you know these are the questions that i'm going to need to answer or this is the you know, whatever, you know, mathematical skill that um, is going to be asked of me in the exam, things like that. Yeah, I think uh, I, I probably, I mean, that probably helped me a lot because I think it can be very disappointing to, to think you've, you know, you've really enjoyed a subject and really think you've learned a lot, but then, you know, you get to the exam and realize, uh, the way they're assessing this is completely different from from what I thought it was. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I always think it's good to, you know, n- not have to do things alone. I mean, uh, one of the great things about university for me, um, especially in the beginning, was that I had, you know, great people around me who, you know, were doing the same thing, were studying the same classes and... Um, you know, having having a collective uh, experience, um, I think just, uh, I mean, I'm sure it helped me uh, academically, but um, what's probably more important is that, uh, you know, it made it a lot more fun, uh, you know, even when like a class is really hard, um, you know, you still got uh, nice people around to, you know, not only try and figure it out together, but also just to have fun together. And... <laughs> um you know realize that uh, there is um, there's more to life than than just studying you know i liked learning i liked doing certain things you know whatever i liked i don't know coding tasks for example um and that's great um and so i should do those but maybe in the exam there's no coding at all so try to try to strike that balance hmm. after university uh, mm-hmm. what was it like for <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh, what was it like to look for your first job? And so how did you try to find a job? And what w- went into your decision? Which job to choose? And how long ago was this actually? This was last year? This was, um, yeah, pretty much exactly one year ago. I mean, it, like, yeah, 12 months ago, I was in the process of writing my master thesis, um, sending applications, I'm looking for, um, yeah, looking for job openings. I had for a long period of time during my studies considered to actually stay at university and to, yeah, you know, do a PhD because that seemed to be a fairly regular thing to do, um, especially in the audio, um, in that, you know, audio 
communication program that I was in that was like a path that was, I almost want someone to say, advertised to us. And, you know, I liked being at university. I generally liked, I guess, um, you know, research. Um, and um, so I thought about that for a long time. But the longer I was in university and the longer I did in you know, research based, you know, work, whether it was through my master thesis or through, um, you know, student jobs that I had at the university, I realized um, I don't think I'm super good at um, having gigantic projects to deal with all on my own with kind of very minimal guidance. Kind of started to figure out is exactly what a PhD is. Um, and um, yeah, I thought that that wouldn't be super good for my mental health because then, you know, starting a PhD, having to, you know, define your own goal and then somehow organize yourself to, to you know, reach that um, research and, and publication goal within, you know, three years or five years. I thought it would be a lot better for me to, you know, work in more of an, you know, industrial what we call industrial setting um, with smaller projects, more people involved, more you know accountability, shorter deadlines, and that's just something that I really wanted to try out. Um, and I had had a really positive experience at my internship at Bang and Olufsen, which is you know a company that develops audio products. So I I got a at least a taste of what product development is like. And I think that's the main thing that I took um, with me uh, when I searched for jobs. So yeah, I would say my main goal was to find a job as yeah product development engineer in the audio industry. Um, that was the kind of, yeah, dream goal of me, mm. for me. And um, that's that's what I then went, went on looking for. And so... Um... What job do you do now? What is your job title and what kind of company do you work at? Yeah, so I am, a, I think, I think I'm called a global audio engineering graduate. I, I, yeah, I believe that's the title. So I'm not even quite sure what that title means. I don't, um, I'm, <laughs> I'm about six months into, you know, working in a corporate environment and right now I'm, I'm, starting to realize I, I don't really know how a lot of this stuff works. <laughs> um, but what I can say is I am in a so-called graduate program, which in Denmark is a pretty common, um, I want to say pretty popular way of starting your career. It is a full-time, uh, you know, a regular full-time, regular en entrance, you know, pay entrance position. Um, in a company and um, in this graduate program, I get to try out um, three different positions in um, two years, so eight, eight months each, um, get to work in three different departments and um, you know see, try out different aspects of audio engineering. So basically anywhere inside the company where audio engineers work, that's where I can potentially go and 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 do a rotation and see, you know, what's the work environment like, you know, um, do I like, you know, am I good at these types of tasks? And, um, you know, of course, also learn, um, you know, get a broader overview of how the whole organization works. Um, um, so that was a really attractive um, option to me um, because, you know, as I just confessed, you know, I don't actually know how, you know, the corporate world really works. And I don't really know what, you know, working as an engineer is, can be like per se. Um, so the option to try out three different jobs at, you know, full pay in, you know, two years was, you know, um, a great gift for me and, 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 and for my orientation. So I hoped The company that I work at is uh, called GN. They're um, one of the larger companies in Denmark, even, I, I believe. Definitely one of the larger um, audio companies um, worldwide, I think. And they, um, um, 
generally speaking, they have kind of two tracks. They have a medical track where they um, do hearing aids, different types of hearing aids. And then there is a um, yeah, audio track where they do um, a professional and consumer um, audio products, mostly office headsets. Um, and, you know, on the consumer side, mostly, um, wireless earbuds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's those, those are the kind of the main product categories that, that GN develops and sells. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. And you mentioned to me before that you're both an audio and acoustics engineer and that those two are not the same thing. So I'd love to know what is the difference? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, um, yeah, right now. As I, as I said, my, my job title is audio engineer and the company, I call it an audio company because they make audio products. And um, the main innovation in the field of audio happens on the software side. So it's, it, it's a very, yeah, it's a very software heavy um, industry, I would say. Um, and to distinguish that from the work of an acoustic engineer, I would say um, acoustics is generally concerned with, you know, the physical phenomenon of sound waves traveling through air, um, whereas audio is mostly concerned with um, audio signals that you, for instance, that you either try to capture with a microphone and then, you know, process them in a better way. For instance, you know, uh, GN makes headsets, so it's really important that the voice quality that they pick up with their microphones is really, really good. Um, and so the what makes that an audio challenge is that, you know, with the headsets, we don't try to change the sound waves in the room because, you know, we can't. Well, what we can do is we can try to use the microphones in a smarter way so that they pick up more of the speaker's voice and less of the reverberation and less of the maybe surrounding noise. What is reverberation? Um, like echo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, so whereas, you know, looking at that same problem from an acoustics perspective, you'd be, you know, you'd be more concerned with, well, maybe we can change the, the room that we're in to kind of dampen the sound or you know make it to uh, make the sound a bit more pleasant so uh, uh, it's easier to concentrate or the, we can understand um, people who are speaking more easily um, it can be um, a lot more technical as well like you know how good is the sound insulation um, uh, if you know we have a wall between two apartments you know how good does that insulate the sound you know and between the two neighbors, um, that's something that acoustics engineers could work on. So that's kind of, I would say, a, um, more closely linked to civil engineering. Mm. Um, and then the other thing that acoustics engineers can do is I, what I would say is more linked to mechanical engineering, where you have any type of machine really that makes noise, often you want this machine to be less noisy. Um, you want a washing machine to be less noisy. You want a vacuum cleaner to be less noisy. You want uh, a car to be, yeah, possibly you want it to be less noisy, or maybe you want it to be more noisy because then, you know, it's cooler. It's cooler. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> and that has a lot to do with, you know, the, how the sound waves, how sound is generated um, by the machine and how it travels, for instance, through the structure, like how does it, how do the sound waves travel from the motor through the car to the um, yeah uh, the driver's ear, for instance, and that's more the acoustics domain. Whereas if I think about okay, um, sticking with the car, even like okay, now um, maybe we want to do a cool thing where uh, we use the loudspeaker system inside the car to do um, noise canceling, um, then that's uh, very much an audio uh, challenge because now you have to figure out a software that um, tells the loudspeakers how to behave in order to cancel out certain noises. Um, so that's, I, I guess, my try to, to yeah. distinguish these two these two industries. 
uh, or these two disciplines um, a little bit. And um, yeah, I have a little bit of both um, since I did acoustics in my bachelor's, audio in my master's, but you can't really separate them completely because of course they're linked and there's always parts of one in the other. Especially you can't really do audio without somehow knowing how sound waves work because in the end you're always going to generate sound waves <laughs> and uh, so you need some understanding of how that works okay so i'd love for you to paint us a little picture of your work day your work environment so what are you wearing where do you work and what does a typical work day look like all right well let's let's give it a shot shall we <laughs> so I typically work at an office. Um, I do have the possibility to work from home pretty much whenever I want to. Um, my employer is pretty, um, yeah, pretty open to that. Not least because we make um, uh, headsets that are made for kind of digital collaboration. Ah, so the the whole idea of that people want to be able to work from everywhere that's very much <laughs> ingrained in our. Uh, you know, mission statement. So it would be weird if we didn't allow our employees <laughs> to, to do the same. Um, but I really like going to the office. Um, uh, the, it's, it's an office in like an industrial park a little bit outside of Copenhagen. So I commute there about 40, 50 minutes by, by public transport. And um, uh, it's an open office um, environment. Um, so I sit like I have my own desk. I sit like at an island of desks with like five other people, and there are lots of these kind of islands all around in in the office. Um, I don't know how many people there are in our entire audio engineering department, but I the last time I counted, it must have been around sixty or something. Mm -hmm. um, whereas the entire organization has like you know, several thousand employees worldwide. Um, and probably like one or two thousand um, at that, you know, in in headquarters. That's you know, that's our our headquarters in 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 Denmark. There is no consideration whatsoever to to dress code. So I I wear pretty much anything that I feel like, um, and no one really cares. Um, I guess that's because as a you know research and development engineer, I don't really have you know, customer contact. And yeah, I would say there's enough kind of artsy spirit amongst audio engineers that, you know, it's it's not like weird to dress super casually or, you know, whatever way you want. So like, you know, I would wear this hoodie or I would wear, you know, any other even like even more casual um, top uh, in summer, I would probably go in wearing t-shirt and shorts um, without even, you know, thinking twice about it. Mm -hmm. That's about where I'm at kind of dress code wise. Mm -hmm. um, I would for sure myself, that's just me, um, dress up. If I'm giving like an important presentation, um, I would probably wear like a shirt and a nice, you know, nice pair of pants, and, you know, clean shoes and stuff. <laughs> um and and that's also completely fine you know I, I don't feel like i don't feel there's any any pressure or any expectation to wear a certain type of clothes for my work and it's not like necessary out of you know either customer facing requirements or you know um safety requirements also that's not really an issue for for us um, what were the other questions oh my was my was my what's my work day like um yeah um I'm not sure I can like give a very like representative um, answer <laughs> about this because the the work that I'm currently doing um, in my first rotation of my audio engineering graduate program is not super closely related to audio, but hey, um, it can happen. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe that's one of the learnings from this podcast. So. Um, I went in, uh, I, you know, kind of day one, if you will, um, started my pro uh, program. I knew my manager, I knew which department I would be in. It's called the audio technology department. So we develop new technology, meaning new algorithms, um, for, you know, future products. 
Um, and they told me they would be really interested in me doing a sustainability investigation um, on whether we could um, reuse um, certain components um, in mass production, kind of getting our used products back, um, taking them apart and reusing certain components rather having to um, you know, source them from, you know, virgin material or, you know, buy, buy new components from our suppliers, which to be completely honest is zero to do with anything that I ever thought I would do as an audio engineer. And again, I don't think it's super representative of what, what audio engineers in my com company usually do. My regular work day is comprised of, um, yeah, um, talking to um, different people um, all around the organization because in order to make this idea work, there are lots of different uh, disciplines involved. Um, so audio is like one fairly small discipline. Um, mechanical design of the products is an important um, aspect. Um, supply chain and operations is an important aspect you know how can we actually transport these used products back is that even viable you know um you know it, does this make sense from a cost perspective does this make sense from a sustainability perspective because that was the original idea so so making an estimate you know would this actually save carbon emissions um if we did it this way and um during this project, basically, I'm 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 trying to figure out what this whole product life cycle looks like, from like designing the the component to you know um, making the mechanical design, manufacturing that, then you know somehow getting it back after the customer doesn't want it anymore, and then putting it back into mass production and um, trying to figure out which of these parts already exist, which don't or which kind of partly exist and would need some work, and then to give some recommendations. Um, that's basically what my project's like. And um, so it's a mix of you know doing a little bit of research, um, mainly asking different people for you know expert advice. I call it, uh, I, I like to call my project a hunt for expert guesses, because none of this is like an established practice. So it's really down to having very experienced people say, yeah, I think this could work if we did that and that. And you really need to make sure that, I don't know, um, I don't know if I can give like a simple example, like you need to be really careful about re-importing used goods into China because that might not even be possible. Try to figure that out. And then I'm like, okay, well, who might know about this? Then I need to track down the person inside the organization who knows best and then ask them, and then that's kind of what my day-to-day -day work looks like, um, which is, again, not very audio related. I think most people around me are concerned either with, um, yeah, developing and testing out uh, new types of audio algorithms. Like, um, yeah, for instance, the thing that I mentioned with, um, uh, you know, the voice clarity, if we have a, if we have a headset, um, how much uh, kind of background noise does the microphone pick up? Can we figure out some way to reduce that? Because, mm -hmm. you know, that would improve the call quality. Um, and um, then those are considerations as to, you know, what kind of microphones are we using? How are we going to place them on our device? And what kind of algorithm, meaning what kind of audio software are we going to use um, to ideally capture to optimally capture um, the sound that we want, which is just the speaker's voice. And um, now talking about what you currently do, mm -hmm. what is your favorite part of that job and what is your least favorite part? So so my, my, my favorite part by far of, of this assignment is that I get to walk around and talk to people far and wide in the organization in the company and learn what they're working on and learn um, what their, you know, what their struggles are, who they, you know, you know, who they have to like fight with uh, in order to, you know, make certain things um, work. And, and that has given me, um, yeah, um, 
I don't know whether joy is the right word, but I find it very, very interesting. Um, uh, yeah, uh, to figure out that an, an industrialization uh, project manager um, would uh, love to, um, you know, improve um, the assembly line, but um, he can never quite get there because of time constraints from uh, product management or something like that. Um, and, and to understand kind of how these dependencies work in like a very grand scale, I think that's, um, that's pretty cool and, uh, very unique to this project as well. I know that that's not something I'm going to get to do later on if I take, um, kind of a fixed, uh, position in, in audio engineering. Mm -hmm. Um, thing that I like least, uh, the thing that I, well, I would say the thing that I struggle with most is that um, this is being a very explorative project. Um, it um, it didn't come with like very clear um, uh, like very clear set out goals to begin with, and um, that's made it a bit hard for me to focus at times and and to have a clear um, direction, and 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 that's a bit frustrating at times. And um, you know, to be completely honest. Um, you know, one of the main reasons why I went away from university is because I was hoping, <laughs> you remember what I said earlier, I was hoping to get multiple smaller projects with shorter deadlines and uh, constraints from the outside. And instead, I've gotten like the complete opposite assignment here. It's, uh, yeah, everything has, has up and downsides. I'm super happy that um, they gave me this assignment because I know I'm... I'm learning a bunch of stuff that I would have no chance to learn in any other project. Mm. And I'm, I'm really, really grateful that um, I'm getting this opportunity. Nice. Um, then one thing I'm really interested to know is what is one misconception about your industry or your profession specifically that most people get wrong? <laughs> Many people <laughs> yeah. get wrong. The, the, the misconce misconception that I am... Um, uh, I know how audio equipment works and then people come and ask me about advice or like uh, which microphones they should buy for their podcasts or something. Um, no, uh, in all honesty, um, there is a very big uh, misconception when I tell people that I'm an audio engineer or I used to tell people I'm studying to be an audio engineer. The picture that most people have in their heads is like someone who works at a recording studio and, you know, sets up microphones and, you know, records music or records spoken word and, you know, mixes these recordings or, or maybe someone who works in, you know, live sound and, you know, sets up um, loudspeakers on, on stages and works at the mixing board. Uh, and that is very, very far away from what, what I like, I could not... To, I'm pretty sure I could not do any of that particularly well. Um, I think, you know, recording music is something that maybe I taught myself a little bit in my free time as like a, a sort of a side project, but it's nothing that was actually part of my uh, my audio degree. And I, I guess, I mean, I understand where the misconception comes from because, you know, that's, I think, you know... I don't even know what you, uh, what you would... Is it maybe like a sound engineer? Sound engineer is what I think you would call it in, in, in English. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, that's what I would call a sound engineer. And that's like a very visible job, right? You know that these people exist and you've maybe seen them in, you know, you know movies or whatever. Or, you know, you've seen them at concerts when you've gone to concerts. You know, oh, that's the audio guy, right? Which is true. It's the audio guy uh, or girl. Um, and... Um, what I do is I develop the technology sound engineers use. So I could go to a microphone company and develop the microphones and improve them or, you know, improve the loudspeakers or, or, or the mixing desks, I, I suppose. Um, um, but I don't actually work in a recording studio. And I'm not even sure how academic of a profession that is. Like, I'm, I'm not too sure how much these... The people who work in like sound engineering, how much they would get out of, you know, 
writing multiple kind of scientific bodies of work, like, you know, bachelor thesis, master thesis, and, uh, you know, whatnot. I mean, it's, it's uh, I think, a much more practical um, profession. Hmm. So what advice would you give someone looking for their first engineering job in your industry? Um, in my industry, um, oh gosh, uh, you know, doing, if, if you have the opportunity to do an internship during your um, university degree, you know, please do that. I did two of them. I did also slightly longer internships than I had to. I mean, that then were required um, just so I could get like a bit more like proper exposure. And um, both of those internships were, were super valuable for me to navigate the job, the, my, my job market just a little bit. It helped me just enough to figure out, okay, I think audio product development is probably something that I would like to do just enough for me to say, yes, okay, I will apply to, um, you know, audio, what is that, audio product development engineer positions and kind of have enough confidence to say, yes, you know, this, I have, um, you know, qualifications for this. <laughs> I can do this. Um, I did not know exactly what my work would be like before I started. And as I then found out, it was even farther removed from audio. <laughs> Than, 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 um, than I had anticipated. You know, there, there, there are different things that that audio engineers do. There, are, there are people who who do more artistic um, work. They'll, they'll, they'll go, go and become maybe like sound designers for you know video games or or you know any kind of uh, audio related content. Um, you should maybe think about how much you want to work in a corporate environment, you know, meaning, you know, you know, kind of product development. I think you should think about um, whether you'd rather work in a large or a small company. One thing that I found a lot amongst my, you know, um, classmates in the audio technology program is there's, you know, there's a real kind of spread between, you know, more like engineering focused people with an engineering background like like me and then there were also people with an artistic background who were maybe they were sound engineers and then decided to do something a bit more academic or they were actual sound artists and and decided to do something a bit more academic um or something a bit more technical and um mm -hmm. yeah i i i what i understand is that um you know, it, I, I guess it makes a large difference for how you feel, whether you work in like a very corporate environment or a kind of, you know, semi-corporate environment where, you know, you're still, you know, obviously somehow in a, you know, profit-driven business, but maybe um, maybe it's a smaller business with, you know, a, a product that you really, um, you really believe in, um, or maybe, you know, maybe it's something more artistic. Um, uh, and all of those are are great options, but I also do think that the type of work can can differ quite quite greatly. So maybe try to figure that out first, um, and then for me, you know, I mean, the, the path that I took was you know very clear, you know, in the you know technical engineering, and also now very clearly the corporate route. Um, I. I don't know where I was going with this. <laughs> but I mean, I think this was great advice to do internships if you can. Yes, to think absolutely. About the size of the company that will fit you. Yeah. And to, yeah, understand a little bit what the job is. Um, yeah, I think that's just, just a little bit. Um, don't, you know, I mean, I don't know whether this is a problem that you have, but, you know, I kind of want to know in a lot of detail, you know, I, I want to know things in a lot of detail. And I think I had to, you know, kind of accept that there was a fair amount of, you know, uncertainty, kind of un not knowing what the work, what working as an audio engineer was exactly like. Hmm. Um, and just trusting that I would be qualified for that with the, with the degree that I have, um, which, um, I'm sitting now on the other side of that process can um, happily say it turns out I am. 
So that's good. I think if you manage to get an engineering degree, then um, whether you believe it or not, that does qualify you to do engineering work. Mm -hmm. Sounds maybe like super stupid, but this is definitely um, something that I didn't necessarily believe in the past. Mm -hmm. And as an audio engineer or acoustics engineer or both, what are some other industries that you could work in? in oh, wow. that That is also an interesting question. So... Well, what you will see in, in as an audio engineer, there there are some other skills that you might acquire or that you might um, use a lot during your um, yeah during your work, especially kind of coding. Um, so maybe you would become like you call that like um, someone who programs embedded systems, which is you know the for for our audio products, those are the the, the digital signal processors, the sound chips that are inside the um, the headphone or the loudspeaker that have the algorithms, that I believe is a, a skill that you could very comfortably transfer to you know um, any type of you know electronic equipment. Um, maybe with some extension, you'd even be able to to get a job as a software engineer. That at least is something that I, you know, kind of contemplate from time to time that, you know, if I did enough coding in my current work, could I at some point work as a software engineer if I wanted to do that? Also, um, you choose to do so. Um, and if your company um, is interested in that, um, machine learning is a pretty big part of audio algorithms nowadays. So you might you know, learn about or specialize in machine learning. Um, and then that, I think, is very easy to see that that is a skill that you could easily transfer to, um, you know, maybe a different uh, different industry mm. um, that uses machine learning for, for their purposes. And I believe that probably, um, that's probably every industry right now. <laughs> At least that's what it feels like um, to me. Mm. Um, uh and then if you're if you're more on the acoustics side and if if you've uh, we haven't talked about that that much because that's not the job that I'm doing right now but um uh I think as an ac acoustics engineer you're fairly close to uh, uh you know certain disciplines of mechanical engineering so uh, dynamics meaning kind of you know um, vibrations um which is i guess an important part of you know certain machines um, uh, uh, you know, vehicles for sure. Um, there, there's, there's a lot of overlap there. You could work in, you know, automotive industry as an acoustic engineer. I mean, I can't like promise you this, but I could imagine that with the uh, technical skill set that you have and with the the classes that you've taken as an acoustic engineer, to some extent, you might also be able to do, um, you know something closer related to me mechanical engineering mm. um but this is a bit bit of a guess because i haven't i haven't actually ever considered switching the industry and um but actually it's a very nice question because um now that i've thought about this maybe maybe at some point i will who knows <laughs> it's good to know you have you have more options mm. um i'd like to now move a little bit towards your personal life and how that relates to engineering so are there any ways in which the fact that you are an engineer or that you became an engineer has impacted or maybe even taken over parts of your life mm, i could imagine maybe friends you have or the way you think about things your humor i don't know anything like that um yeah um i, I guess i have thought about that time time and again and i'm I'm not completely sure whether I would coin them like you know, uh, you know, because I'm an, call it because I'm an engineer. Um, uh, I mean, that's one way to look at it. I think another way to look at it is maybe because I have like a very scientific approach to things. Um, I mean, those are maybe kind of similar mm -hmm. similar categories. Um, people who meet me and you know hang out with me in my you know private life, they will. They will probably be amazed at how much I enjoy, you know, weighing 
things in the kitchen. Um, so, you know, if I, I, can have, if I have a recipe, you know, I think it's really nice to, you know, accurately follow the instructions kind of to like, you know, scientific accuracy. Um, yeah, I don't know whether that's an engineering thing or whether it's a scientist thing or whether that even matters. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say my kitchen scale is my favorite and most used kitchen utensil. Um, so I'll just leave that at that. Um, the other parts of my life, mm. it's difficult to see from the inside, right? From, from, from my point of view, but you know, time, time and again, someone will tell me like, oh, like, wow, you have like a very analytical way of thinking. I'm like, oh, do I, I think I have a, a normal way of thinking, but of course that's because I think the way that I do, that's the only way I know. Right. Mm. <laughs> um, you know, I, 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 I can get very excited about, um, you know, choosing like to buy a new piece of technology, especially a piece of audio technology, of course, but you know, any, any type of, of technological or technical, you know, acquisition, uh, I will gladly spend um, a very long time kind of looking at the specs and trying to figure out you know, what's like the perfect spec set for my needs and, and, you know, trying to optimize, you know, finding the optimal product. I think I optimize a lot, um, not just purchasing decisions, also just, uh, you know, in general, um, like optimizing processes, uh, in, in, in my life and stuff like that. So, mm. yeah, it probably, it probably shows, it probably shows very, very clearly. I don't think about it too much. Like, I don't like on a day to day basis thinking like, oh yeah, that's the engineer in me. But mm, I don't know. Maybe it's very obvious if someone else saw me. Mm. Okay. Um, but generally, these are all all traits of myself about myself that I like. So it's um, I'm I'm fairly comfortable with all of those. <laughs> and you are 27 now, which I know because we're the same age. Well, mine is two days. And uh, well. Anyway, so um, what are your career goals going forward and where do you see yourself in, let's say, five? Yeah, um, I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> um, okay, that, that's a bit of a lie. But um, yeah, at the moment, I'm like very, very busy figuring out how um, a company works and how like, you know, corporate work works. And, you know, I don't know how work works. So I'm learning that right now. And then once I figure that out a little bit, I'll start getting an idea of where I want to take that. I am, I would say, equally interested in going down some like technical specialization route. So, you know, for example, one, one kind of skill that I really enjoyed during university was um, um, acoustic simulations. Um, that's something we also do in, 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 my company um and you know really diving deep and becoming more of an expert technical expert in that um specific discipline um that's that's one path that i see and um on the other hand i am also i want to say equally interested in um you know dealing with humans mm -hmm. which in the long run probably means something like management Mm -hmm. um, because yeah, I do think a lot about communication and, you know, um, you know, uh, working together in a better way, kind of improving, you know, improving the like efficiency of like, um, you know, teamwork. And, um, you know, I also think it's, it's a pretty nice mission to, you know, help people do their job, uh, as best they can. Uh, and probably also, you know, be, you know, uh, you know, organize, you know, be kind of organized and, you know, having an overview and, and kind of planning stuff. So, yeah, despite the fact that I always idealized, uh, you know, kind of uh, technical special specialization kind of career, I'd, I'd definitely be interested to see whether whether I can, you know, try out something like management at some point. But I, as as far as I understand it now, which is I don't understand very well, but the way I understand it now, it is a very harsh trade off that you make because if you enjoy doing technical work and then at some point become a manager, you're 
probably going to do very little to zero technical work um, kind of for the rest of your career. Um, so I'm also very wary of that. Um, I'm going to finish my graduate program in one and a half years. Um, hopefully, Jan's going to have a nice uh, position for me then or someone else in Denmark because I really like living there. Um, and um, hopefully by that point, I'll also know a bit better um, what I want to work as. That's the reason I'm in the graduate program because I want to figure that out a bit. And right now, I don't really know. And I'm just trying to, you know, take the whole experience in and uh, ideally ask a lot of stupid questions um, to understand how, how things work in, in this company that I'm in. And kind of like pretending like you're not yourself. Mm -hmm. If someone was in your shoes and they don't really know where to take their careers, what do they, what do you think they could do to get closer to that answer? Um, like again, I think like, I think the single best thing you probably can do is like, you know, interview people, go to people who do th <laughs> okay you got me <laughs> um you got me um yeah all right yeah um uh i think that's always been the the best the best thing for me th throughout the entire time is you know um, get a look at and get a taste of what different jobs um are like ask them you know why do you like doing your job You know, why do you like being a, you know, whatever, engineering specialist? Why do you like being a engineering manager? Why do you like being a, you know, how did you, uh, you know, become a, you know, senior product development engineer or, you know, whatever. Mm. Um, I'm, you know, in the lucky position that now, you know, I have all of these people around me. So, um, yeah. Um, I want to try to ask some of those people time and again, take some time and kind of the directions that do interest me a little bit, you know, find some people who do that work and, and have a coffee with them, have a tea with them, have a, you know, whatever beverage you like to consume with them. All right. I think that's uh, great advice that I'm taking seriously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'd love to end with some rapid fire questions because I always love when podcasts do that. Okay, great. Are those are those the questions that you try to uh, you know kind of avoid? They like fire. Are you gonna you fire at me? Try to I'm try to duck and cover. Quite the opposite. Okay. All right. So, who's your favorite band or musician? Green Day. What was your favorite class or project in university? Um, numerical acoustics. What was your least favorite class or project in university? Um, electrical engineering. What is your favorite book? Um, The Prophet by Khalil Gibran. What is your favorite blog or podcast? Um, my favorite blog or podcast. Um, I haven't been doing a lot of those lately. Oh, no, I do know. I do. Know. Oh, I know a really cool podcast. It is called, um, it's a music podcast. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. I did not come prepared for this rapid fire question. <laughs> It is a music podcast and they talk about um, pop music. Switch on pop. Switch on Pop. That's a really cool podcast. Um, they do like uh, kind of scientific analysis of of pop music, and yeah, that's really cool. Anyway, yeah, sorry, too right. <laughs> that was perfect. And if you had to totally abandon your current engineering career and start a completely different career, what would you do? I don't know. Maybe I'd like open a cafe or something. Um, You're a pretty good barista, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do. I do love my coffee. Uh, uh, or a bar, you know. Maybe I'd open like a cocktail bar. That'd be cool. Something where I can um, um, shamelessly force people to listen to my playlists. Uh, that would be nice. Yeah, yeah. I would like that. Sounds awesome. Okay. Or become a playlist curator for Spotify. So Spotify, if you're uh, listening to this, you got it. Um, I'm here. I'm just waiting for your offer. So say that uh, Spotify wants to contact you or <laughs> or any of the people listening to this want to connect with you after this podcast. Uh, where can they find you? Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. I, I have a profile and uh, we're probably going to link that. Yeah, we're <laughs> we're going to link the LinkedIn pro profile uh, and you can like, uh, 
yeah, you can connect with me. Uh, if you want to connect with me, maybe try writing something so I know, like, uh, you know, you're actually interested in talking to me. Otherwise, I might not respond. Um, but if you write to me, then um, I'll be super happy to, yeah, have a conversation with you. All right. Uh, Jeffrey, thank you so much for being here and sharing your story. And thank you so much for listening. And I will see you next week with a brand new episode of the Fresh Engineer podcast. Bye. <laughs> Wow, that was really cool. It's not every day that you get to learn so many new things about a close friend after almost nine years of friendship. I was surprised to learn just how many different industries you can work in as an audio and acoustics engineer. This shows that even a fairly specialized type of engineering still gives you tons of career options. So thank you again, Jeffrey Thompson, for coming onto the show and sharing your story. You can find the show notes for this episode on freshengineer.io slash podcast slash one including links to everything we talked about. Next week, I will talk to a hardware engineer about how you can start making stuff with electronics, even without studying electrical engineering, what embedded systems engineering is, and how you can figure out if you're on the right career path. Subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, or wherever else you get your podcast so you don't miss it. Here's already a little sneak peek. The way I was looking at it is, if everything goes all, all right, like what's the best I can ever be? in this this position and let's say that was like some really high up engineer or manager i don't know and then i would ask myself in the best case scenario would i be happy with with that um in that case the answer was no so that, that's one thing and another thing is like if you start hoping that the culture is going to change or something big that is really out of your uh reach then i also think it's a good sign because most likely something like that will not change. Thanks for tuning in to the Fresh Engineer podcast, where fresh engineers share their stories. 